Hey guys, thank you all for joining me for this week's devotional. <laughs> We're going to talk about emotional stress today. And, you know, God wants you to enjoy life. I have a little girl here who, who has not... Come here, come on, come on. No, no, she's, she's not been very happy in the last few minutes. Are you okay? Yeah? Hmm? You want to sit with me? No? You want to sit with me? You can. All right. Did you know that God wants you to enjoy life? He wants you to enjoy your family. He wants you to enjoy your home. He does not want you to just feel weighed down and unhappy with what's going on in life. No, as a matter of fact, God wants you, here we go. He wants you to have a smile on your face. And he wants you to, you know, his plans are to prosper you. His plans are to give you a future and a hope. You know where we miss it is we get all caught up in our own heart of just allowing hurts, pain, unforgiveness to turn into bitterness or offense, to carry around emotions that we should have dealt with by going to the Lord first, not by you know complaining or criticizing or going to so-and-so here or so-and-so there. As a matter of fact, the Lord, He's just been dealing with me about this uh, since the beginning of the year of just getting over the emotional stress. And you say, well, Anna, that sounds a little callous. It sounds callous to say, just get over it. You know, I'm not trying to be callous. And, and ultimately, you know, you don't know what I've gone through. I don't know what you've gone through. But I do know this, is that the Lord knows. And I know that He wants to take care of it. And He wants us to enjoy life and, and embrace what God's doing in our life. Oh, okay. We're getting better here. Here we go. In Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21, it says, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. It's God's purpose that will stand. It's His purpose that, that, that it's only through His purpose that we're able to have deep roots that grow. Because it's His foundation. It's His hope. You want to reap the benefits of the Word of God? You've got to be a doer of the Word of God. And a part of being a doer of the Word of God is going to God when you're emotionally stressed out and going to Him and saying, God, I need help. It's getting your focus on Him, not on the problem, not on the person, not on who's right or who's wrong, not on how hard it is. And I know this is hard. I've been there. But it's getting your focus on Jesus and recognizing that truly, it's not about who's right, and it's not about who's wrong. It's all about Jesus, and it's about what He's calling us to do. Why? So that we can fulfill His perfect plan for our lives, so that we can be a reflection of that love to others, so that we can enjoy life, so that we can enjoy life. Does God want us to enjoy life? Yes. Yeah. Oh, two thumbs up. Good. So in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, I want to read this in the message. It says, I'm not saying that I have this all together. I know we've all been there before. <laughs> or that I have it made. But I am well on my way. Reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Let's stop right there. Are you on your way today, reaching out for Christ? Have you been in a place of just emotional stress? and you feel like you've been stuck, well, I want you to know exactly what the Word has just said. God is reaching out for you, and He's asking you to reach out for Him. When you study this in the Greek, uh, actually studying this out, He's talking about it's an aggressive chase, that you are aggressively reaching out towards the Lord. You're pursuing Him. You're desiring to just apprehend all that He has for you. That you're getting after it because you say, I, I will do whatever it takes. I refuse to live in unforgiveness. I refuse to live in a place where I'm hurt or I feel shame or I'm overwhelmed or I'm just unhappy. You've got to get to a place where you say, I refuse that. And Lord, I'm going to reach out to you because you have reached out to me. Then he goes on to say, friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I have my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us on, um, onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not looking back. When he's talking about the eye on the goal, whenever you research that out, the amazing thing about it is it's not just any goal. No, he's talking about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, that you have your eye focused in on Jesus. 
and you're aggressively reaching towards him and then you're not looking back. You want to get over emotional stress today, get your eye, eye off of the problem, eye off of the, the person and get your eye on Jesus. Focus on him and do everything that you can to reach out and to say, Lord, I need help. God, what do you want me to do? And then you get into the word of God and you recognize through God's word, God, you've got a plan for all of this. As a matter of fact, if you're dealing with unforgiveness, in Mark chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, and many of us know Mark 11 because he talks about speaking to our mountains in Mark 11, using our voice, praise God. But he goes on to say, and he's talking about forgiveness and prayer here. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Often we wonder, Lord, what does this look like? I'm carrying this around. You know, are you operating in unforgiveness? Are you staying stuck in a place of unforgiveness? Or have you reached out to Jesus who has reached out to you? Are you reaching out towards his resurrection power saying, God, I'm going to do whatever it takes. And Lord, I know I'm not alone in this and you're helping me every step of the way. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. Oh, I'm going to read it all and we're going to wrap it up with this. Does it sound good? Okay, sounds good. It says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. This, you, this is your new nature. This is your new life in Christ. This is something that daily, it's our job to put on. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. So clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. This is not an option. That wasn't in there, but I'm throwing it out there. It's not an option. You got to make allowance for people. This is where God's grace comes in. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm only, not perfect. <laughs> only God's perfect. Then he goes on to say, above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. This is putting on garments of praise and thanksgiving. This is clothing ourselves in the love of Christ every day, where you stamp it on your head, where you recognize, Jesus, I'm looking to you. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. My life and whatever I do or say and all that I do or say, I need to do it for Christ. And the only way I can do that is if every day I'm reaching out for him. I'm forgetting those things behind. I'm recognizing, God, you forgave me, and I've got to clothe myself in Christ. I've got to operate, just like Colossians chapter 3 says, that I'm, this is my new man. This is who I am in Christ Jesus as a child of God. And with that, Lord, you are helping me every step of the way. Your plans are to prosper me so that I can have a future and a hope. You know, I love you guys. And uh, praise God. God's doing a work in your life. He's doing a work in my life. And this is what it looks like to live for Jesus. We don't have to live in emotional stress, but we can get over it, move forward, and God's gonna help us every step of the way. And with that, he's gonna get all of the glory. So I love you guys, God's so faithful, amen, he's so good. And uh, we're gonna go outside and do some sidewalk chalk. Is that right? Yeah, build a humongous house. That's right. All right, love you guys, uh, see you soon, bye.